It's time once again to turn back the clock and take a look at Swindon from a time gone by. More Swindon through the years, comparing the images from the past with those of a modern Swindon. And this time we're turning back the clock to the 1990s. It was boom time for Swindon. Expansion, conversion and improvements, all captured by the Swindon cable cameras for the weekly news programme This Is Swindon. We now look back at some of those images, capturing a town in transition, frozen in time, in more Swindon Through the Years. Delving into the Swindon Cable Archive, we're turning back the clock to 1994. Another look at Swindon Through the Years. Perhaps Swindon's version of the Dreaming Spires. Or perhaps not. This building, more than any others, has caused controversy across the years and has been vilified. Of course, it's the big top market in Market Street, replacing the once loved Victorian building. Although the life of this too is set to come to an end. We journey back in time to 1994 and we can still see the outline of the old Victorian market as preparations are underway to erect the Big Top. The bottom of commercial roads being the home of the market for well over 100 years. Our pictures show the tented market under construction. Thamesdown Borough Council, as the council was then known, had decided to move the market back to its original location, having been inside the Brunel Centre since the old market had been demolished. The modern views show the building hasn't aged well. In fact, it's now empty and ready to be torn down and replaced by another new development, the next phase in the history of this site. It was in 1892 that the original market, part of the Mechanics Institute building, was replaced by the much-missed triangular brick building that went on to house over 17 shops. Our 1994 views show the framework is in place the road layout's been realigned and the work well underway to create the new building. The 1990s brief was to create an innovative, dynamic building, and the chosen design was a steel-framed, fabric-roof tented structure. This became the distinct landmark we know today. In fact, the building was completed in just six months, with the five peaks apparently representing the fairground, a tradition that was always part of market activity in country towns like Swindon. The design has always been controversial, and many people still miss the sights and sounds and smells of the old market. Many still have fond memories of the old brick-built Victorian building. Later in the year, we see the building almost complete as we compare it to the images in the more modern view. The cheaper form of construction hasn't weathered well since it was erected in 1994. The 1994 views show a hive of activity as the building work progresses. One thing is for sure, the tented version won't be around much longer. 
the building is set to be replaced. The plans are to remove the tented structure and redevelop the site. One suggestion is to continue with a market on the ground floor and perhaps restaurants and apartments on floors built over the market. And while we're in the town, in 1994 this was the Brunel Market, based on the upper floors above the shops, beneath the curved glass roof. Some of the former retailers that were once based in the old building had moved into the new Brunel Centre Market, and still continued to offer a selection of goods including cakes, sweets, meats, clothes and shoes. Of course, this part of the Brunel was set to be revamped. The stairs leading up to the market would disappear when alterations took place to build a new flagship store for the House of Fraser. But back then, Tandy and Lemon Place were still places to visit before they were swept away, all in the name of progress. And interesting to note that this whole area at one time would have been on the banks of the canal transformed into the familiar wharf green that we know so well today. It's another example of how changes happen under our noses and at the time we hardly ever notice them. Here's a modern view of one of Swindon's main retail parks. This is the Greenbridge Retail Park that houses some of the biggest retail names. An example of out-of-town shopping where you can take the car and park for free. As you might expect, some of those familiar retail names come and go as the fortunes of the major stores wax and wane as shopping trends fluctuate. We turn back the clock to 1994 and we're presented with a very different view. Our pictures show that Greenbridge was coming to the end of its life as home to industrial warehouses. The old buildings were in a poor state as many businesses had already moved on. For a number of years Greenbridge had been home to the Saturday and Sunday market. You can clearly see the signs for the old market. Plans were being formulated to develop the site for a brand new use. The industrial buildings were about to be demolished and a huge transformation of the site about to get underway. And roughly from the same location, here's the modern view and what a transformation. The old BRS Road haulage building, just one of those that disappeared. The development work saw a major new retail park being established, housing a mixture of retail and entertainment facilities. A new cinema built close at hand, built to complement the multiplex at Shaw Ridge, originally opening as Cineworld, later to become The Empire in 2006. This view towards what is now the next door shows how the site used to look. Back then, no one would ever have envisaged being able to watch a film, play bingo or even pick up a prescription from the pharmacist on the site. It's another example of the town adapting. And as shopping trends sway towards more online, it'll be interesting to see what the future has for retail parks like this at Greenbridge. We'll have more Swindon through the years coming soon, but in the meantime, please do remember, like, comment and share. We'd like to hear your memories of a changing town. And look out, more Swindon through the years coming soon. Bye.